All right, I've been waiting a long time to interview this MF. This is Christian White. He went from nothing to taking 11 listings in the last three months. And if you've been on the Discord, you know Christian. He always has his camera off. He's always on deaf mode. And he's dialing for like literally 12 hours a day. He's genuinely the hardest worker I've ever met. Before we dive into your story, what kind of changed your business completely? You just closed your third deal. You just quit your part-time job. You are now officially full-time in this. You have like such a story to tell. Give us a quick little intro of like who you are, where you're from. Gotcha. Okay, so I started So I started in Atlanta. Uh, well, moved here to Atlanta. And all I knew was, you know, cold calling circle project. Prospecting. I had ran across, you know, Aaron's videos beforehand, and I just wasn't a believer. I wasn't a believer, you know, when I first saw Aaron. I was like, man, what? This stuff doesn't work, this, that, and the other. So I just decided to, you know, go my own route, circle prospecting. Started out 8 to 8, Monday through Friday. Saturdays, I usually start from like maybe 9 a.m. to 8. But like a religious madman, I would call all day all night and wasn't having any success. I would get, you know, emails, you know, you build your database, but I think we all know a database doesn't convert to closings. Um, I would maybe get like, maybe, a, you know, some people here and there that might want to sell us some leads and you follow up with them. And, you know, next thing you know it, you know, they're not looking to do anything. They dodge you. Um, so it was a really, I mean, to be honest with you, it's really kind of hard to talk about, you know, mm. because, you know, when you're working so hard, you feel like you're just waiting for that big break. And until you start finding success, doing the right stuff, you realize you were just in a, maybe a matrix or maybe in a world of illusion in a way, because you're not, the, the whole time you're not really doing the right thing, if you kind of get what I'm saying. What makes, um, so it, hard hard to, to, what makes it hard to talk about? What do you mean by that? I, I, I guess the, I don't want to say the mental fatigue, but I guess, you know, just the depression, really, really being stressed out with it, you know, adding putting your, you know, your heart into it, you know, you're, I mean, you're missing out on family stuff. You're, you're saying no to a lot of different things, trying to make the commitment to be on the phone. And wow. when you're not having success with that, um, I mean, it's hard to talk about to be honest with you, but when you're not having success with that, it really, really eats you alive. Even though, you know, you still get up and you still are going to keep pushing, you still believe in, it's really hard. I think the harder part is when you're watching other agents have success who aren't working as hard as you, mm. um, that was the real killer. So let me stress uh, a few points a here. Time. You just moved, you just newly moved to Atlanta mm -hmm. and you didn't really have a sphere. I had a zero sphere. I didn't, I knew nobody. The only people I knew were, you know, my family and that's all. I didn't know a soul. So, I didn't know a soul. So you knew cold calling worked. You went into circle prospecting. How long were you doing this from eight to eight? You were, you were calling 12, like around 12 hours a day. I was a religiously calling 12 hours a day, five, seven days a week. How long were you doing that for? Four or five months, I want to say, maybe about four or five months. You know, I would get maybe some emails here, maybe a lead here, a lead there, but it wasn't anything that maturated into, you know, a closing or a commission check as I think we all wanted to get, so. Yeah, man, that's, dude, four or five months to commit to 12 hours a day of dialing, saying no to family stuff, not seeing things work out while you see other agents succeed is, yeah, that, that totally calls for depression, dude. I mean, really, I was talking about, it's really hard to talk about, to be honest with you. I mean, now that I'm, things are going really good right now, it's... You said that you weren't a believer. What do you mean by that? You weren't a believer in my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I was a, all right. Because no, you were, I wasn't. I you mean, were going, I like mean, you and I both, you and I both, went the Ricky the Ricky Caruth route. Check in, yeah. like, how you doing? How's the dog? Yeah, so, and this is nothing to throw Ricky Caruth under the bus or anything. He's amazing what he does. He's a, a top producer. I guess I went the Ricky Caruth route. That was the route that I went, you know, thinking, you know, like you said, check in. Is there anything I can do for you? You know, and I'm seeing this guy, Aaron, I'm on, you know, YouTube talking about, you know, just talking to people, just the framework and how you were, I was like, what? Like, that's aggressive. Like, people don't respond to that. And I went the recruit route and I looked up and I had no closings, no listings, just a, a database full of emails that were getting market updates from me that weren't doing anything. And I want to make it clear, it's nothing against recruit. I'm just saying like that method just wasn't working at that, like just wasn't working. What happened that made you reach out to me? When people call me off of YouTube, I hate that. And when you called me, I was like, I got to get this MF off the phone. 
you know, because you're start asking me about, mo hey, are you Aaron? Hey, what do you do with this Mojo thing? And I'm like, dude, I'm not Mojo, Mojo support. Thing. Don't call me about this. You told me that That's you cold wild. call all day. And I was like, wait a minute. There's not a lot of people like this. Let me, let me keep talking to mm. you. So what, yeah. what made you reach out? Because you weren't a believer. What, what did you see that was like, you know what? Maybe he's got something to say. You know, I was going through your stuff. I still watch your YouTube videos, you know, here and there. Um, so I was still, you know, in a way connected to, you know, what you were putting out there. Uh, so I think in a way, you know, with things not going the way that I wanted to go, you know, you start to, you know, listen, you know, be a little bit more open-minded. But even when I called you, I still wasn't there yet, you know? Mm. But I was watching your mm. stuff. I was, you know, watching you be you, you know, close people. And, you know, the whole thing about being a closer, I was starting to change to that, but I just wasn't there yet. So when I called you, I literally was calling you just like, Get the answer, get off the phone. That was like the, the purpose of the phone call. It wasn't like to, you know, look, can you help me? It was really more like, all right, get the answer, get off the phone. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, I think, uh, you know, God works in mysterious ways and everything from that changed. I mean, you've changed, I mean, it changed everything. You changed everything. What happened okay. afterwards? Like, what did I expose you to? What What did you learn that really... Like, what was day one like for you? You want me to tell them the story before I joined when we were on the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell I called them everything, him. dude. All right. So I called Aaron and I said, bro, because I was getting a chance for my license and I was so hesitant. And Aaron was like, he kept falling up with me. I was like, man. Oh, like, so to give context, transfer yeah. license to EXP, you mean? Yeah, transfer to EXP. Okay, okay. So to give a backstory, because of Christian's work ethic, I wanted him to join me at EXP under the Yoon group. And so I'm telling him like, hey man, you're getting ripped off. You're, you're splitting cap sucks over there. Come over here. It's better financially. There's rev share in stocks. And also I'll train you. So yeah. So I was trying to bring him over here and, and that's where the Christian story starts. Yeah. So I just remember like right, like the day before I transferred my life, it's like it was official. I remember I called you and I was like, Aaron, like I'm about to transfer this shit. Can you guarantee me like I'll make six figures? And I'll never forget you telling me this. I just remember the whole work, the day, the day, the time of the day I was on the street, you know, everything, like what I had on. And he was like, bro, you're going to make six figures on accident. And I said, Aaron, like, I'm not playing. Like, I'm serious about this, bro. Like, <laughs> don't be like, don't fuck with, don't, don't fuck with me. Like a lot of people say, you know, because there's a lot of coaches out there that say this and the other. He's like, you're going to make it on accident. And man, did you ever, you know, not lie. Were you, were you ever not, were you ever honest? So, um, it's been a game changer. You've been a game changer and you know that. So yeah, <laughs> it's been crazy, bro. That's great, man. So what happened on day one? Like, what did you, what did you learn? What, what was that like? Um, and mm, tell me like it, your ahas, yeah. your like, woes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I took the Academy the first time and it was a, just the whole framework and what was being taught was definitely a game changer. Um, and I guess when I had saw the Academy the first time, you know, I was a little hesitant when I was first seeing the first video, but once I start to go through it and peel back the layers, I said, oh, okay, I'm starting to understand, you know, how this can be changed all my business. It's just a matter of figuring out, you know, knowing what I'm saying, knowing the framework, knowing the objection handlers, and I can take off. But once I had saw the Academy, you remember I texted you that day, um, even though you didn't text me back, but I texted you that day and I said, bro, this is like, this is, I can definitely, this is a game changer. This is, this is it. This uh, is it. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, that's what, um, when I got on the Academy, that was like the windows of heaven opened up and I like finally found like, okay, I think I have some here to, you know, be able to, find success because it's one thing to cold call, but it's one thing to cold call and know how to, you know, close people. And I think that was the part that I had missed the skill mm. part. I, I remember that conversation. I knowing your work ethic, when you said, I want to make a hundred K I do not tell people you'll make it on accident. I, I, in fact, I tell them about how hard this is going to be, you know, mm. yeah. but knowing your work ethic, I, I confidently said, you're going to make this on, you're going to make a hundred K on accident. You know, you just Absolutely. need to learn the framework of what to say, you know? And in fact, Christian, I've told you multiple times, like, 
yeah, you're probably gonna make over 300K. Yeah, you're, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you made like 700K this year. Mm -hmm. And I remember like towards the beginning of you stepping into expireds, like getting in the expired lead source and then converting those. Yep. I would tell you these things like, yeah, you're probably gonna make X amount this year and, you're, and you just couldn't believe me, you know? Yeah, man. You couldn't yeah. believe me. And I, I think the very first week you set like 14 listing appointments mm -hmm. after implementing yep. the expired lead source and the framework. Do you remember that mm -hmm. week? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was freaking scary. Tell like, me about like crazy. Tell me about that first appointment and then tell me about that week. Oh man. Like setting that first that appointment. First, I think like the first day I set like five appointments, like that <laughs> first day. I was I was rolling. Wait, okay, uh, all right. So hold on, hold on. For the all right. So 4 or 5 months you were circle prospecting and you had a whole database how many appointments mm -hmm. did you set out of that per month let's say circle prospecting <laughs> shit be like one maybe one a month no no just one in general I think it was like <laughs> maybe one appointment like a legit like I'm thinking about a legit like appointment maybe one okay. I know that is, is so problem, one yeah. one appointment in four or five months mm -hmm. and then you said five your first day mm-hmm Okay, what went through your head? Yeah. Like, what was what was happening? Like, oh, we about to take off. Like, I think I found it. I think, I think, you know, I finally have found the skills to get to where I want to go. And I finally found the right pathway to get to where I want to go. That first day, I was like, I was so excited, bro. Like, that that made my day. Like, I mean, it was it was crazy. It was um, something I've never probably experienced before. Because when you work so hard, you want to see the fruits of your labor, you know, come to fruition. And how I was handling objections and being able to close people who were being called by other people, you mm -hmm. know, by other agents. Um, and then be, me being able to schedule listening appointments with them was uh, was crazy. So um, it was definitely a special, a special experience and you know, the beginning of something big and, and new. So, yes, sir. Now, fast forward a few months. Now that we're a few months into this, like. How has mm -hmm. things changed for you? I, I know that you just uh, recently quit your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I just I closed on a on a huge deal to quit my job. Uh, I have more listings than I've ever had in my life. I've never had this many <laughs> listings, never ever in my life. I've never the most listings I've ever before I met you I ever had in my life was maybe two or three at the same time. Uh -huh. I mean, I have six right now. I haven't dealt with any buyers. I mean, it's just been amazing. I mean, it's been a total game changer. It's been spectacular, man. I mean, I, I, so I mean, what you've taught me. As far as like the framework and being able to, like I said, close people, but it's all based on it's all that framework and me learning it has turned into me getting all those listings. So um, it's been amazing, bro. I, I, I mean, this I know I tell you this all the time, but you know, you know, I appreciate you more than you never know. So yeah, dude, I appreciate you too, man. And don't like I, I can't take all the credit because you're a rare one that like you work a lot like you you mm -hmm. are like you grind Absolutely. and i want you to talk a little bit about that because you have that mindset that most people don't bro sometimes not even me like talk about really what it takes i i saw you i saw you talk a little bit about it on your instagram if you were to guide or and coach a new agent hey should i be dialing three hours like What's the best time to dial? Should I be dialing three hours? Is three hours enough? Mm. Like, what would you tell that guy? No, three hours isn't enough. <laughs> um, it's not even close to enough. This is my opinion and what I've learned. I think there's a stigma in real estate. You know, you call from eight to 12 and you deal with clients. You know, you call your legal expires from eight to 12, you deal with clients. And just my opinion and what I've seen, you need to be on the phone for a long time to get opportunities. Because it's so, one is so competitive and two, if you're not on the phone for a long time, you're not going to be, you already, it's already hard to talk to a lot of expires as it is. So if you're not on the phone for a long time, you're not going to give yourself the opportunities to be able to one, show your skills and two, create, create business for yourself. Define um, long time. A minimum of six hours, without a doubt. If you're not on the phone a minimum of six hours, then you're wasting your time. Hmm. If it was me, I spoke about this a little bit on my Instagram. If it was me, I'll be on the phone eight hours a day. If it was me, and that's just me. If if you're really trying to kill it with expires, from what I've seen, two hours is not going to cut it. Three hours is not going to cut it. Four or five, 
It's not going to cut it. And it's it's not just doing it one day. It's doing it on a consistent basis and trusting the process. I think consistency and trusting the process and calling for a long time, if you do all those three things, without a doubt, you'll find success. And I think that's one thing I've seen with people that don't find success is that they're not working hard enough. They're not on the phone long enough. And they're not committed. One day they're on the phone, one day they're not. You have to be on the phone every day, especially if you don't have, you don't have business, you need to be on the phone all day from sunup to sundown from eight to eight. How many people get that, dude? Nobody gets it. Mo most people don't get it. And I try to preach that to, you know, some people. But, um, you know, I mean, mm. you can lead a, this is the saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, you know? So, dude, um, side note, you should be preaching that on Instagram. That's like, okay. that should be one of your messages. Okay. I'll look sure. on Discord on a Sunday or like a Saturday and I see you in the cold call room by yourself and like you, you really do put in that work. How do you do it? How do you just sit for 12 hours a day? Bro, you also like go to the gym for three hours at like 1 a.m. <laughs> Dude, your schedule's ridiculous. You'll have like two hours of sleep and dial for 12 hours a day. I'm over, I'm over exaggerating about the sleep thing, but no, no bro, no, some, bro, one day, like, one day, out, one day when we were in Atlanta, like you slept an hour, went to the gym. You went to the gym after we hung out to like 3 a.m. Bro, you're yeah. insane. I can't believe you do what you do. How do you do it? Well, I think it comes down to purpose. I think it comes down to how bad do you want it? And I, I mean, I know, I know that's so cliche, man, but... How bad do you want to be successful? And you, I mean, and it's how bad do you want it? It really comes down to your why. You, how bad do you want to be successful? How bad do you want to make it? And that kind of correlates into your actions. I mean, as far as like you know, cold calling, being on the phone twelve hours, and it just comes comes down to focus on the process. You know, not worrying about the results, even though the results do come. Focus on the process. Just say, you know, today I'm just going to focus on calling every single day. I'm not going to worry about the results for today, tomorrow. I'm just going to focus on calling every single day till I accomplish my goal. Will that goal be 200,000, 300,000 a year? Will that goal be 10 appointments a month or whatever the case may be? Um, I just really, really am good on focusing on the process and being consistent. And then you add, you know, the why into that, it just enhances everything on just a higher level. And I'm competitive too. I'm, I'm extremely, extremely competitive. I don't like to be second to none, but that really drives me. Um, to be able to be on the phone, you know, all day. And I have a hat too when I'm on the phone. I watch a lot of movies throughout the day. So I can watch, I can literally watch. Like I just watched all three of the Matrix a couple of days ago, <laughs> being on the phone all day. So um, it's just like a solitude type of thing, you know, being on the phone and being in a room. That's why I have the lights off. People that know me in Discord know I, I call with the lights off. It just helps me to zone in and focus on, you know, what the purpose is and what the mission is. And which is, you know, calling. Chris Chan, yeah. for an agent that wants to get listings and is maybe considering working with me, what would you say? I would say put the work in. Listen to Aaron. Don't take what he says personally because he's out for your best interest. Even though it's tough love, he knows what he's talking about. 100%. And I'll be real with you. Like, when I came into this, I didn't expect to be friends with Aaron. And he's my guy. Like, he's my dude. Like... Can I just, can I say this when you came to Atlanta real yeah, quick? Can yeah. I say this? He has a good, I, first you got a good heart and that like stands out to me more than anything else. You have a good heart. Like genuinely, you're generally a good dude. Oh wow. Um, but he came to Atlanta, pick this dude up from the airport. He come to Atlanta, come to my crib. I'm like, I just seen this dude on YouTube like five months ago. He's in my crib, not eating chicken, making my dad laugh, clowning upstairs with my dad. I had a listen appointment that day, so I had to leave. But he's over here, like, in the kitchen talking and clowning with my dad, laughing, eating chicken and fries. And then, you know, you come down here and just, you know, show me so much love. And um, I didn't tell you this, but it really stood out to me. Like, man, like, this dude is generally, like, a friend of mine. Like, he actually cares. Uh, but I would definitely – I just want to kind of throw that out there just to show you. Just from, like, a personal standpoint, it's not just coaching with Aaron. It's him knowing you on a personal level and then being able to turn that into – finding a way to coach you. Um, mm -hmm. I would say if you're going to work with him, you have to be ready to work. Put the time in, be open to listen, and put the work in when you're not working with him. I think that's really, really big. When it, when it comes down to scripts, role playing, I think that is so huge. Because with me, 
even though we were role playing in this and the other, every night I would go to objection handling. I would go over scripts and get just a little bit better every day till I knew everything like the back of my hand. So um, that's what I would say. Listen to Aaron. Listen to what he has to say. Don't take what he says personally because it's always coming from a, a genuine place of, of tough love. But also be willing to put the work in outside of that. And if he sees that, he's going to even – you know, invest even more into you to make sure you get to where you want to go. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember you were like, you told me you were studying your objections or you, you had them all written down or something? Yeah, I have them all written down. I still have them written down. I still go over them, you know. Still? <laughs> right? I try. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to do it now since you have appointments, you got other business pulling at you. But, you know, I definitely, you know, try to keep it fresh and continue to you know, stay on top of it because you get a new objection every day. Christian, where can people find you? Man. I... And, and well, you just started posting. You just started posting. So there's, you, you guys can watch Lord. Christian's life. Oh my Lord. So I, this is why I like Aaron. This is why he's my guy. Okay? He got me into posting on social media, got me out of my comfort zone, which I really appreciate him for. Find me on Instagram, Mr. I think it's Mr. Christian L. White. You can find me on Facebook, Christian White. I'm going to make a TikTok and I got to make a YouTube. You have to make but a YouTube. I'll link it all in the description. Rare. Check the description for the YouTube link when he makes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And um, actually, can I give, just give you a shout out, Aaron? Can yeah. I just give you a shout out? Yeah. Y'all, this is my guy, man. <laughs> this is the real deal, okay? And I really mean that. And I'm, I don't just say that just about anybody. I've, rent, I've been through programs. This guy is the real deal. This is the real, you know what I mean? This is the real guy. So, and I'm not just saying this because, you know, I'm, we've had, I've had success. I've, me and Aaron have talked a lot and he's generally like a friend of mine, like a generally really, really, really good friend, maybe a brother, you know, but, um, I mean, this is the guy. So I just want everybody out there to know, like, you know, if you're hesitant of, you know, pulling the trigger, I'm like, this is my guy and this is the guy. And you know, I appreciate you. I'm going to tell you again, I appreciate everything you've done. And You've not only been a blessing to me, but you've been, you've been a blessing to my family too, my man. So uh, my dad still talks about you to this day, you know, See how you're doing it. Everybody. Yeah, man. You made a good impression come over and eat all the chicken. So that's why that's good. Story. Yeah. So but I just wanted to say that, man. I really appreciate, I appreciate you. That, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for doing this. Hey, for sure, my brother. Hey, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to my Instagram. See you guys in the Discord.